Welcome to Listening to Paint Dry with Mike and Dan, a podcast about the art and hobby of miniature painting. I'm Mike, and this week I'm flying solo again due to Dan's kind of crazy work schedule, and we also wanted to get an episode out this week for sure. A few quick things before we move on to the actual interview this week. First of all, I need to talk about a correction I have to make. In the episode where I interviewed Matt DiPietro, I had attributed a vacation poster from the movie Vacation to Frank Francetta as opposed to Boris Vallejo. Somebody pointed that out, that it was a Vallejo work, so thank you for that correction. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry about kind of mixing the amazing artists out there. Secondly, our next full episode will air on August 31st. It'll be a special episode to commemorate the Jack the Ripper murders in Whitechapel. Uh, the August 31st is the date of the first killing, so we thought it would be kind of interesting to do something about that. Dan and I are both fascinated with the events that unfolded during Jack's reign of terror, and neither of us are what you would call ripperologists, but the whole time period is incredible, and it's uh, interesting to study both not only the events that happened, but the way they were covered in the media, etc. So we'll be talking about the murders and the suspects, and the media a little bit. We'll focus mostly on board games and miniatures that are available on the subject matter. So, And there's quite a bit out there, and they're all pretty cool. I actually have a few of them in my collection as well. Third, I'll be doing a mini episode called When You Wish Upon the Brush. I bought about 100 brushes, uh, synthetics, from Wish for less than 20 bucks, and they've all finally come in after months and months and months. Yes, it's interesting to learn that some of these that are the, that are super cheap brushes actually turned out to be fantastic. Some of the ones that were the more expensive ones that I spent like 2 or $3 on the pack were absolutely terrible brushes. So take a listen when it comes out. It should be out in the next week. Finally, again, we're going to ask our listeners if they could spread the word about the podcast. Ask friends, family members, uh, other people you know on the hobby to like, subscribe, or follow wherever they get their podcasts. You can follow us on social media at Instagram and Facebook at Listening to Paint Dry. We're also on Twitter at Dry Painting. You can send us an email at Listening to Paint Dry at gmail.com. So any help you could give, that would be totally appreciated. And if you do decide to download the podcast, if you could leave us a good review or wherever you got your podcast from, that would be totally awesome. This week, we're super excited to have Jay and Nick from Ian's of Battle join us on the show. They host a YouTube channel where they do tutorials on basing, painting, also throw out, you know, a Space Marine song, (laughs) which is quite a lot of fun to listen to. They're fantastic painters, they're great guys, and it's an awesome interview. Jay and Nick, welcome to the show. Hello. Hi, yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us indeed. You know, uh, I wanted to say, first of all, I'll, I'll thank you guys for all the content that you put out there. For people like me who came into the hobby five years ago and seeing things like basing and such along those lines, your videos were so accessible um, and they made, it made it actually kind of increase the joy of painting. So thank you guys very much for all the work that you put in. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm, we hear that a lot weirdly. Yeah. yeah. Our videos, we like them. Yep. (laughs) Um, yeah, and there, there. I know on YouTube, uh, there's over twenty-seven thousand other people who do too. Yeah, so that's yeah. a good sign. Yeah. Um, so tell me, how did you guys get into the hobby? What kind of started you down this path? Well, I got Nick yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah. I got into it in high school. I had known about Warhammer from my cousin, but um, one day a friend of mine just was like, "Hey, have you ever heard of this thing, Forty K? It's like a, it's like fantasy in space." And like the next day, we went to the to the Warhammer store. <laughs> Which was called the Games Workshop at the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, lucky and, enough uh, to have one really close. Really close. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just I grabbed a box of Necrons. He grabbed, I think, like a Tyranid starter box mm. and some paint mm. and a, a fly rinse yep. and all everything you need. Um, but I remember, I remember my first box of uh, Death Marks, Necron Death Marks. I don't know yeah. where they went. Yeah. They don't, I don't own them anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I think, uh, I don't know, when was that? Like, like it was seven years ago, maybe? Like, we were in yeah, high school. Yeah, That yeah. sounds right, seven years ago. Yeah, so maybe we were, like, sophomores in high school yeah. when we started. Because, yeah, because I remember we were taking uh, Architectural CAD yes. together. We were learning, we and... were learning uh, AutoCAD from a man who knew Vectorworks. Yeah, he didn't know the program at all. And so we just fooled around the whole time and looked up, like, Games Workshop stuff and... Uh, 
Jay would bring in his models, and then he would show it, show them to me, and I would, I would look at them, and he, Gretchen was the first yeah, it was thing, thing that you brought me, and I'm like, oh, this is really neat. And um, I remember going to the Warhammer store, and I don't remember the guy's name that used to run it, Dave? but he hated his life. Yeah, he hated it. He hated working there more than anything. Yeah, he did. And the big thing was uh, Dark Vengeance. It was. They wanted to sell you Dark Vengeance. You walk in the door, they're like, hey, you want to buy Dark Vengeance? Yep. Nope, just here for Orcs. Yeah. So Orcs and Dark and Vengeance? And that's exactly what it was. He was like, <laughs> he's like, I know that you want to play Orcs, but Dark Vengeance is a great deal. It's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. You should get it. I'm like, I know everyone Everyone has the rule book. I'm fine. I, I, I know what the rules are. It's like, no, nah, you should get Dark Vengeance. And then I remember playing the game with him, like the starter game, where you mm-hmm. win because they have, to make it, <laughs> they have to make it fun for you. Mm-hmm. And so we started playing the game. And uh, you win immediately in the first three minutes. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but was that fun? Do you like the game? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Weird first encounter with it. Mm-hmm. But the models are really what brought me into it. Yeah, like, I don't know. It amazes me anyone gets into this hobby. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. It's, it's hard to get started. But the big thing is like having friends it is. that play the game. That's the, that's the real way. Yeah. You get a couple of people messing around, reading the rules, <laughs> trying to figure out what the rules mean. Yep. <laughs> yeah, especially in, like, the early edition. Like, the yeah. early editions were confusing, especially for high school high schoolers that barely know how to read. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so trying to make sixth sense edition of the yeah, sixth edition rule book. Yeah, sixth edition rule book, trying to understand what all the rules mean, and then getting the rules wrong every single Having time we play the game. to look up tank shock every time, night yep. fighting every time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've yeah, spent it's definitely hours. complicated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, the models are definitely what brought me into it. I, I love the look of the models. Um, so, more, even more than the game, I would say. Because my first gaming experiences were weird, <laughs> especially <laughs> at the store. Yeah, I have a very similar... Uh, my, my son found my models. That's how I got back into it. And then he wow. and I went to a games workshop. And there was a guy there... My God, it was the same, like you're describing like our experience <laughs> on the East Coast, the same exact way that yeah. it was basically, you know, the, I had a whole bunch of, I guess I had bought some stuff during second edition, but never, like I didn't even open it because mm-hmm. life kind of ran, ran over me at that point. But right. it, it was the, you guys want to play, you know, buy this, you know, this set, uh, you know, like this whole process and pushing the whole thing. And we're like, no, we just want to look around, you know, I want to see what's <laughs> out there, you know? Yeah. Um, and then they actually, uh, that guy left and the store, the, the people that they replaced him with are amazing. Actually, they're, they're, they're really cool people there now, but yeah, I was almost turned right back off of the hobby, like within minutes of being back into it. I'm like, Whoa, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, so I, I totally get it. I think one of, one of the first games that I, I was a part of or uh, watching or something, do you remember it was like. It was Necrons versus everything else. Yeah. And it was like this giant apocalypse game. It might have been a, like almost it like was, a store birthday or a was, new edition. I don't know what it was. It was. I think it was called Tanks Killing or Tanks Giving. Oh, Tanks Giving. Yeah. I think that's what it was. And it was it was everyone in the world versus Necrons. Yeah. And, and it, the Necrons just got curb stomped. Yeah, because <laughs> of course. Because they were in the middle and everyone else was on the sides. Mm-hmm. And it was 6th edition. <laughs> so yeah. it was not, it just wasn't fun. Uh, I still thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. It, was just, it was a shocking number of models yeah. on the table yeah. at once. When, when, yeah, every turn was two hours. It was. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. So then you got to be excited, though, then, with the Necrons, the new Necrons coming out, or that have come out in ninth, ninth edition. And what do you think of those models? I, I think every, all of, every model in Indominus is perfect. It's incredible. <laughs> um, I don't know. This week, we're actually doing a Necron week. We're yeah, putting yeah. a video out every single day based on Necrons. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm very excited for Indominus. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm planning on I have my Necron army, but it's it's the least put together of anything I own. So I'm yeah. gonna my Indominus is on the way, and I'm slowly working on getting it presentable. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's in the the Primaris models that are in it are an insanity. With some like the I, I look at some of the old stuff that GW used to do with their plastics, and I used to think that was amazing. And then mm-hmm. I look at you know the details on like the Chaplain. And you're like, oh yeah, that ain't not like this is as uh, almost as good as resin, you know. This yeah. is about about as close as close to as it you're gonna get. So then now you guys did the you got into the hobby. What 
how did Eons of Battle come about? How did you guys decide to do a YouTube channel? We were always working on schemes, like yeah. video games, yeah. we were making yeah. stuff. And yeah. I was super into uh, mini wargaming mm-hmm. with Matt yeah. and Dave. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was watching those every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can do that, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, need someone confidence. with a camera. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, because and like we also, you know, we we, I don't know, maybe we we started making the videos maybe a, a for me maybe a few months, maybe you a year into yeah. the hobby, and like, um, we were watching tutorials all the time, and so there'd be these tutorials out there that would be twenty minutes long about how to dry brush, and so a minute of it would be an intro, and then five minutes of it would be some guy talking for mm-hmm. about nothing, and then you'd have the the, you'd have the like tutorial for like a minute and then an outro for the rest of the time and we just thought that that was a little ridiculous he didn't learn anything you know during that 20 minute video yeah like our we would we try to make our videos as short as we possibly could yeah but yeah and that's the interesting thing too is that even from back in the day of like you know when you guys started this up you know six seven years ago the the nature of youtube and what's out there has totally changed as well. Completely. You know, completely. It's completely different. The you know, production you, value is incredible. Yeah. Everyone's video looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it. I, there, there are a lot of people that are out there trying, and I'm really That's, rooting for yeah. them. But there are, there, there are some that are out there that are kind of hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Make sure but, you're filming but don't uh, get landscape. There. <laughs> That's a big one. Film and landscape. If you're yeah, going to film, film on your phone. portrait. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that that actually is very good advice very simple for sure yeah, yeah. i've noticed that i've seen some that are like uh, is are they filming that with the gopro or their phone or <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hard to follow. yeah. Um, sometimes so been... i think that they uh they try to make like tiktoks out of them too sometimes mm-hmm. so they film them all vertical and then they upload it to youtube as well and it just it's not the same format it doesn't work yeah you, have, you almost have to film the video twice if you want to do both i don't know it's weird yeah, that, that make that does make sense actually. That why why it would be that way that they were trying to go across platforms, you know. Mm-hmm. So that actually, I hadn't thought about that because yeah. <laughs> I don't, I do, I do everything else. I don't do the TikTok for the podcast. I'm like, nah, nah, not, nah, nah, I'm not touching that. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you probably don't need to. It's gonna be gone in a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens with it. Right, that's that's a fair point as well for sure. So along with this, with with the making and videos, what's kind of been your favorite part of, of doing it? it I, the most, f- I mean, it's kind of work, but the most <laughs> fun part is probably just as it's uploading, seeing some comments, yeah, seeing, and some seeing comments. likes, and yeah. people watching it. Yeah, and like you, you get to experiment a lot. Yeah, on, on trying different things because you you know when you we're doing Necron Week and you know you we're doing like three different painting schemes, mm-hmm. and like you would have never painted no, three different yeah. schemes unless we had we wanted to make some videos about it mm-hmm. um so you you get to learn a lot more by just producing a lot of content yeah like the my, the way i war game is different now because of the youtube channel because it's constantly like well what if i pour glue into sawdust or what if i put <laughs> spackle on, over the eyes of the necron or just just trying crazy stuff just trying to get videos out of it <laughs> yeah well, hey, no, that's all part of it, right? It's all part of like you, you never know when you're going to find the next great technique, mm-hmm. right? And that that, that right. blows everybody away. Uh, so with that, I was going to say, has there any other ways that is has it made you better painters? Do you think like do you think that's helped your painting skills? Probably not. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I paint more way more off camera yeah. than I do on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, you... the channel probably got me more different models. Yeah. Like yeah, I probably, probably wouldn't have painted as many orcs and space marines and. Mm-hmm. Thing I wouldn't have tried as many different things as quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, your variety increased of what you kind of the areas that you painted because of it. That's awesome. Right. And I you think know. I think one of the things though is you have to think about it in like that, that step step by step process yeah. too. So when you when you when you're doing the the YouTube stuff and it doesn't matter if you're painting, you know orc boys or whatever you're thinking about like oh well maybe i can make a tutorial out of this maybe i need to remember these steps so that i can make a video about it later that's very true like i always think about it like i got to get all the blues done at once and Mm -hmm. then all the browns and then all the reds right because i remember way back in the day a model would take 30 hours because okay i'm gonna paint the boots 
and now I'm going to yeah. paint the belts, and now I'm going to paint the head, and I'm just reusing colors and yeah. getting those colors back on my palette yeah. again and again and again. Yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of tutorials out there that are like that, where they don't plan ahead of time. They just paint it, and so they paint the boots brown, and then they paint the rainbow, and then they go back to brown yeah. for different things that they could have just hit the first time with the brown. And you know, people are they're discovering it as they go, which is fine, but you can't teach people yeah, it's, that. It's important. The first go shouldn't be on camera. Yeah, yeah. The first it never few. really works out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. So, with uh, in the hobby itself, what is one of your favorite, or what is your favorite thing to do in the hobby? Um, I mean, I think, I think probably for both of us, if I, I don't know, but uh, like the posing and the modeling. Is yeah, probably, I like building and yeah, modeling, yeah, kit bashing, yeah, and green uh, stuff, dioramas, building like the, the bases and stuff. That's probably the best part because it like it sets up it sets up the beautiful paint scheme to come, and that's mm -hmm. that's that's fun. You know, you get you get to try some different things out, and then it sets up the next step to you know to be able to paint however you want. Yeah, and it's just it it kind of makes the model worth its value. Like you know, yeah. you buy a box of Space Marines, and you're like, that was forty bucks. But then yep. like you add skulls, <laughs> and you add the nice spacing with the milliput, yeah. and you find some grass tufts, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're just like, this this is kind of this is of that value to me. Yeah, yeah. Then on the other side of that, what's kind of the least favorite? Like I always give the I hate mold lines. Like mold lines are like <laughs> the big pain of my existence. Because I'm into a display, I'm 60 hours into a display piece, and I'm like, holy crap, there's a mold line on the foot, you know. So <laughs> when it's for you guys, what's your least favorite? Yeah, you kind of hit it with the mold line. Yeah, the mold, holy yeah, cow! The when mold. you're working with a kit that kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that's why the new kits are amazing. Yeah, I, yeah. I I built 30 of the Gene Stealers, mm -hmm. and every piece in that kit has just a disgusting mold line mm -hmm. on it. Yep. Just hours of filing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember I had, um, we had a friend, and that, that's also what helped get me started, was we had a friend that had Blackreach. Like, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah Daniel. Salt on Blackreach. Yeah, Salt on Blackreach. And I think he got it, like, like his parents got it, like, a baby shower, you know? Like, he's, <laughs> he's had it forever, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, and he, like, so he gave, he just gave it to us, which is really nice of him. Mm -hmm. And I remember all those orcs. I'm pretty sure I painted them all with the mold lines on them yep. because I just didn't know any better. Uh, and so I can I still see them now and I'm like, yeah, this all needs to this all needs to get updated. Mm -hmm. You just need to start from scratch. <laughs> right. Take, taking it back to your question though, like what don't I like? I I like everything about the painting and modeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I enjoy the putting them together, the painting, the it's I don't know, it's like it's one of my favorite things to do is mm -hmm. just putting together models and painting them. Yeah. Especially when like your your end like with that end goal in mind of yeah. being able to take the model, spin it 360, you get to enjoy every part of it. Mm -hmm. It's that accomplishment at the end. If you're if you're going in thinking about every single step individually, it can become work. Yeah. But thinking about that nice ending, you know, and the experimentation of it, that's what actually makes it fun. Nice. Now, how much time uh, would you say that you guys spend between? Do you guys do display and competition type pieces as well, or are you just mainly army painters? Probably army. Yeah, just, I've painted some stuff, some some smaller models just for fun that are mm -hmm. for display, but most 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 of my painting goes into my armies. Yeah, I would I would say so too. Right, it's, it, but there you know it's one of those things that we're learning as this hobby progresses is that there's so much crossover, like stuff that people do in army painting to increase their speed can actually increase the quality of display painting as well. You know, so it's an interesting, I, I love seeing, you know, I, I still, even though I don't paint armies, I still watch army painting videos um, just because mm -hmm. there's always something to learn for sure. Right. You know, um, what do you think is the most difficult thing that you had to learn with modeling and, and, and in the hobby? I don't know. It's hard to say. It's all hard at first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you have to, you have to work, you have to work through everything yeah, pretty you much to, you have to learn to not use games workshop plastic glue yeah <laughs> you that's have like to learn. a big one <laughs> you have to learn about the mold lines and where to find them how to right. clean the models properly right. don't cut everything off the sprue because you need the numbers <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah don't prime on the sprue ah oh, that's i see that all the time yeah yeah there's a lot of yeah i mean yeah when you start you're a baby you don't know anything mm -hmm. you know you're just crawling around and uh, which is about right and yeah, I don't know. You know, you don't even know what a base coat is. Yeah. You don't even you don't even know you just slap the paint on there. 
mm-hmm. um, or people put you know way too much paint on people don't know about all that kind of stuff i think it's, it's also hard because games workshops painting style on the boxes is almost you can't replicate it yeah i mean yeah and I, yeah i think that's... every every single line of that model is highlighted and edge highlighted the washes sit perfectly in the recesses right and like you see that no no one's paint job looks like that yeah Right. Um, you know, yeah, it takes it takes a long time to get that like, good. Back in the day, the set, the third edition codex and stuff, the models look very doable. Yep. I mean, red, you know, pick out the eyes, pick out the gun, you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's always been an amazing thing to me, is because I remember when I started out in like I think it was eighty eight, eighty nine is when I bought my first Rogue Trader kit, and I grabbed a white dwarf, and even in that there was something like, oh, when we used an ink wash on this, and I'm like what's an ink wash do i take it out of a pen or like what how do i you know (laughs) amazing i had no idea what any of that stuff is now you know fast forward to when i jumped back in five years five years ago and i'm like there's all this bottled magic around you know (laughs) yeah liquid talent liquid talent cheat juice (laughs) yep (laughs) i remember when people were dipping their models in uh like floor polish and then they would dip it in um like wood stain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then they'd put it on the end of a drill and spin, spin it, it up off. to flick off all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then Army Painter came out with the dip, which combined those two stages, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've, I've always wanted just to try that stuff, but I've never actually done it. I've never actually, I'm like, you know, that's a lot of money just to try them yeah. off. You know? <laughs> I've tried it. You don't need to. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I I've been told that you spend more time cleaning off the stuff on it than you do actually yeah, like and enjo- enjoying on, the model. It goes on so thick, it's mm-hmm. not worth it, and you have no control over it. Yeah, it, sometimes it can react with the primer you use. Sometimes you find out, oh, that doesn't look good over gray. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> too bad I did it to forty troops. Yeah, right. And that stuff has got the urethane in it already. Like, you know, it's got that hard shellac in it yeah. already. So you're you're not stripping those easily. <laughs> yep. Nope. Yep. Where do you guys see yourself uh, going uh, from here? Like, what are, is there other areas that you would like to expand Eons of Battle into? Um, I'd like to do more kind of personal videos. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, my whole thing is, hey, guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. And today I'm going to show you how to... <laughs> That's, I don't know how to yeah. do a video yeah, another yeah. way. Your hands are famous. <laughs> they like, are. That's, the, that's the big thing. But I'd love to, to do some videos where I'm kind of the star of them. Yeah. And uh, I'm talking about my armies yeah. and my process. Yeah. And, and we, we, have some, we have some ideas that we're cooking up about that, um, you know, where it's a little bit... We, we want to keep doing the really nice quick tutorials. And um, like our, we, ch- we kind of changed up our painting tutorials, yeah. too. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit, so I think that they're a lot easier to follow. But we also want to do like I guess scripted content almost. Yeah, like, you know, you still learn something, but it's it's a little bit more it's a little bit more exciting. It's, it's like little, a show. It's like a show. Something yeah. to watch. Something As to watch. Just like, well, how do I do a pin wash, or how yeah. do I paint that? Right. Right. That that makes a lot of sense, and I, I feel your pain, man, because uh, I've done the record uh, like intro recording for the you know, welcome to listen to your paint. I would like an. And my family, if they hear it, like mock me as I do it now because I've done it so many times. And yeah. like, so I, I feel I, when you said that, I was like, oh, that got me right in the heart. I know, <laughs> I know that feeling. Right. Yeah. So the, where do you, it, some yeah. of the stuff that you guys do? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. No, no, I didn't no, mean to cut you off okay, there. Oh no, I was gonna. I, I wanted. I, I was curious as to like I know I've lo- watched. Um, one of the examples of a video is you did the tile floor with the cardboard squares and um, hot glue to make the exploding sand, etc. Where do you guys get those ideas from? Because that's uh, I always find that I have an idea in my head of how I want a base to look, but I have a hard time translating that into like kind of a reality. And so, like I thought about the exploding sand thing, and then you did the hot, I saw the hot glue video, and I went, well, damn, that makes a lot of sense. Um, is there any like particular place you get inspiration or techniques from, et cetera? I think it's just hours and hours of looking at for reference or looking at Pinterest or watching hundreds of movies. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> getting getting ideas and trying them out. You just going to the hardware store and buying everything. Yeah, that's like that's that's one of my favorite things is we can like go to like a 
like a Michaels or something, and Jay mm-hmm. just looks at everything. He's like, oh, I can make this yeah. into that, and I can make that into this, and that's, I can make this into that. That's one of the big things I think of our channel is like we kind of try to stay away from art supplies. Yeah. Because I always find art supplies really intimidating. Like you buy, you know, an eight dollar thing of stucco, and it's got this beautiful Mona Lisa on the front. Yeah. And you're like, I can't do that. Right. But then you, you know, you go to your Home Depot and you get some spackle. Yeah. And you're like, look what I did with some two dollar spackle. Right. Exactly. It's pretty good. And it doesn't hurt as bad when you mess up because it's yeah. two dollars spackle, you know. Right. Now, have you guys ventured into other gaming systems besides uh, 40k? I got real into X Wing right out mm-hmm. of uh, right out of high school when when me and my friends all had jobs. Mm-hmm. We had like Sunday was our gaming day, and we would play X Wing for like ten hours. Oh, wow. We would play until like two in the morning, <laughs> and then get up for work the next day. Yeah, that's hurt. And, and what about you, Nick? Any other games? Not, not really. Yeah, I think like after, because after high school, yeah, after high school we went. I, you know, we started college, and um, yeah, I mean, when when that happened, all the time disappeared. All of it. Yeah, all the time disappeared. So yeah, not not too much. Um, but yeah, but then once we we actually moved states and we transferred colleges and we started living together, and then we we had a table. We actually built a table we before did. we left. And um, for all the three games yeah, we played, on we, it. we played like a few games on it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've played a game of 40k in a long time. Like no, probably, me either. probably like two years. It's probably whatever the last game we played is the last game. Oh no, I played with. Um, yeah, you played with some friends. Yeah, like a, two years ago or yeah, something. I think yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, but I mean, I think our favorite parts is the is the painting and the modeling and all that kind of stuff yeah like even more than the game sometimes the game's just a, it's hard to get everybody in the same place yeah and uh and now it's a little bit easier to teach people how to play yeah the they rules, fix the rules they, a lot they they made the rules a lot easier but you know when when people are moving around and we're in a weird spot mm-hmm. in the world and <laughs> so it, it makes it just a little bit difficult to play the game yeah, absolutely. I was going to ask how you guys were holding up during the quarantine. Uh, how are things going uh, for you guys? I know uh, for me, I thought I would get a lot more painting done than I actually have. But uh, yeah, I think I finished one model so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to show you up, but I think I've done 100 models. <laughs> I nice. have been painting there you like go. a fiend. Yep, there you go. I got so much Black Templar done, so much, some orcs done. Yeah, I've got my Necrons out of a box. Yeah, out of a box. That's a big step. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of Necrons there. Um, but yeah, and then we've been doing the, these videos yeah. too. Um, I mean, the as, as weird as everything is, I mean, that's kind of that was part of the catalyst of restarting making videos again as yeah. well. Just because we have a lot of time on our hands. Yep. Um, so we're making we're, we started making the videos. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys are back at it because I really do enjoy the, the work that you, you, you do and appreciate it. So why don't we, why don't we go into some fun questions? Um, yeah, so these questions if... suck. Let's get into <laughs> the fun stuff. <laughs> yep. The rest of that stuff was boring. All right. So the, the kind of a fun question we always do is, um, so if you were approached by, I don't know, Army Painter Scale 75 or somebody and it said, we want to make an Eons of Battle paint color, what color would it be and what would you name it? Uh, I think I think that paint already exists. It's called Vallejo Stonewall Gray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I've used it in every model I've ever painted. Yeah. Oh, it's just such a good color. Mm-hmm. It goes. You can you can thin it and thin it and thin it, and it'll go on one coat. Just a wonderful light gray paint. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. It's in a lot of videos. It's in most of the videos. Most of the videos. Yeah. Definitely one. The one that came out today. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. All right, so I need I need to make a call to Vallejo then I guess and say we need yeah. to change that paint color. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah, me, yeah. it's a uh, eons of gray. Uh, eons of gray. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Is there a model that hasn't been made that you would like to see made? Boy, it's hard to say. Yeah, There's... a model that hasn't been made that I want made. Yeah, I have a I have a bunch of models that I want, or I have one model in particular that I want them to redo. What the, model? The, the Death Copter. Oh my god! <laughs> Just ah, oh, the Def Copter. Yeah. I can't believe they still sell that thing yeah, they, on the website. Well, they I guess did they take it down? They, they didn't take it down, but you can't buy it. Oh, okay. So it exists still, but yeah, it's thirty three dollars for one model. I'm pretty sure it's metal it's, or it's, something. It, it's, it, or it, was it, it must be cast? resin by now. I don't know if they make I any metal. 
But well, that's what it was. I remember when I when I started Orcs, that's what it was. It was yeah. metal. It was metal. Which is so weird because the they were great Death Captors in Assault on Black Reach. Yeah, yeah. Because I and they never have made those ever never, again. Exactly. And I don't know why they couldn't they couldn't just take that model and just maybe update it. Maybe maybe make it like not as mold liney, mm -hmm. and uh, that'd be perfect. They're probably not going to make a Death Captor because if you look at their their track record, it's going to be like a a super War Copta. Yeah, exactly. They, they just they make a new name. Yeah. Yeah, right. Right. We can. But all that stuff back in the day were metal. I can remember. I actually remember seeing one of those, where in the person? guy had it on, on on a flight stand. Yeah, a, 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 a quite a long time ago. Like maybe in second edition time period, and uh, it kept falling. It was so heavy, it kept just falling off the flight ah. stand because it was mm -hmm. all. Uh, yeah, I'm like, it's a. It's a. You know. It's one of those things that I, if they did it now in plastic, it would probably look a bazillion times better too. Right. Oh, you know what model I want? I want a plastic Thunderhawk. I'm gonna, me and the rest of the internet. That's all we want is a plastic <laughs> Thunderhawk. You know, my co-host has a resin one, and it came with the frame bent, basically. Yeah, they all like, do. Almost, Every Ford model. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he spent, he's like, he spent hours trying to get it realigned and i'm like why don't you you're, at some point you're just gonna have to cut it and like mm -hmm. melt part of it you know like you're gonna have to figure something out man because he, he's had that for years and he still can't figure it out well those are awesome i really i really appreciate uh that kind of old school mentality of like things like the 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 cop that we were actually dan and i were talking today about whether we would see uh new versions of the legion of damned at some point um, oh, I which, hope we do. The Legion yeah. of Damned were really cool. I have I have a little baggy of metal Legionnaires somewhere. I hope they I hope we get some Primaris Legion of the Damned. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, especially since I heard they changed the lore. I guess it went from where it was the Lost Firehawks to basically heroes of chap dead heroes of other chapters together or something like that. I don't know because yeah. originally, go ahead. I don't know if there were ever officially Firehawks. There were a lot of similarities. But um, but then they're 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 the, sure they're the Firehawks, but then they just become like space like evil space uh, ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can go a lot of different directions with that yeah. for sure. You know that, that. And the other thing that we we talked about, I've been pushing for is I want to see new great knights. And then now having the blade guard in my hand, I'm like, oh my god, these guys could easily convert to great knights. I'm a little nervous about the Grey Knights because I think the the uh, Terminators are out of stock, and I have 40 Grey Knight Terminators ready to be painted because I had this dream of an all uh, an all Terminator Grey Knight army, <laughs> and all of a sudden if they get moved to Legends, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna be painting those up for one game. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Legends is that a different? Is that like a that's not in the I guess the lore anymore? It's just kind of pushed away, or well, I. I don't really mind that sort of thing, because how strong, how, like how rock solid has the lore ever been? It seems to constantly be going through big changes. Mm -hmm. But if it, if it, you know, if it no longer has tabletop rules or updated tabletop rules, that's yeah. kind of the death note for it. Okay, I just said never. I somebody had mentioned something else about legends, and I'm like, I don't know. Is there like different? Like, I I know there's narrative play. I know there's competitive play. I just didn't know if there was like legends, which was uh, yeah, free legends, for all. Just, Legend seems to just be like, hey, I've got a chapel on a bike. You mind? Nah, that's cool. It seems yeah. like that's all it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just gotta, you just gotta okay it with whoever you're playing against. Okay, yeah. that that works. That's fine. It's so a friendly game, basically. Yeah. yeah. Which all games should be. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot agreed. more fun. A absolutely agreed. And so you know, the motto of our podcast is better, braver, happier. Um, do you have any advice that you could give our listeners as they continue their journey? Oh, I would say like paint every model like it was new. Like don't don't create a formula and then just stick to it. Mm -hmm. I would say every single time you paint, you know, if you're an ultramarine player, paint every single one a little new. Try out different colors, sponging, dry brushing, airbrushing. It, your your models won't look like as perfect next to each other, but you're just gonna get so much better. Right, and you could always if you find something that's gonna that that works for you, then you could always go back and repaint. You know, the ones that maybe maybe didn't work out. Yeah, your first like, ones. I've 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 no I've heard people say like that they hate painting their salamanders or whatever just because mm -hmm. they get they got bored of green. Mm -hmm. 
then paint some different checkerboard black and white like there's a million things you could do right. like no they they're green and they have the black shoulders and that's yeah and like the big thing that that jay does which i think really helps him continue to paint is you you make you buy the box but then you almost you make characters like every single space marine is almost like a character or, or yeah. kind of kind of like a character that's that's one thing i would love to put out there is uh don't hang on to bits if you find something that's cool stick it slap it right onto the model yeah because i have my first space marine army was black templar and i think i saved every bit every cool little dangly or bullet or extra magazine I saved all of those because I'm like, well, maybe I'll do Stern Guard or maybe I'll do some some uh, veterans. No, s- stick that right on the model. My favorite my favorite space marine is like an infantryman with a scope and a <laughs> and a robotic eyeball. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah, yeah, you yeah you made it you made it fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you played around with it like it's almost like it's a game. And that's, yeah, and that's what it is. Because yeah, because a lot of a lot of people take everything way too seriously especially 40k they, they almost don't take their life seriously but they take 40k a hundred percent seriously and if you just if you just take a deep breath and you just have fun with it like the the painting the modeling all all the parts start becoming fun because uh, mm-hmm. you can easily get overwhelmed especially when you're starting out yeah especially when an entire indominus box shows up and you're yeah. like oh my god a year's worth of painting yeah exactly a year <laughs> but i'm sorry I, th- there was 60 models in there that's like uh five years worth of painting <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> for people like me anyways for sure but, but thank you guys so much for taking the time to 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 do this interview um and again i want to make sure you guys understand how much uh people like me who are out there and appreciate the the content that you put out there it really makes the hobby community so much stronger and thank you yeah yeah, yeah thank you you for saying that yeah we've we've been getting some uh we've, we've been getting especially since we've been re-uploading we've get we've gotten so many nice compliments and yeah people have been dming almost us. too nice yeah almost too nice yeah <laughs> not it's, every it's, video we've ever put out is, is is a is an a a, a, a level plus, video but it's it's insane you know I, there is something to yeah there's i mean and that's why we came back too is you know people like you that were so are so nice about it and you're excited to watch the videos and it, i'm glad that it helps Dan and I would like to thank Jay and Nick from Ian's of Battle for joining us today on the show. What a fantastic and insightful interview. We really appreciate this guy's taking the time out of the day to talk to us about their hobby journey. You could follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Ian's of Battle. Please make sure you also like and subscribe their YouTube page. You'll get a ton out of it. 240 plus videos on basing, different types of painting techniques, etc., uh, especially if you're into doing Indominus, they just celebrated what they called Necron Week. And so there's a ton of painting videos for the new box set out there. So thank you guys very, very much. And we look forward to talking to you again. So you can follow us listening to Paint Dry on Facebook and Instagram. Also on Twitter at Dry Painting. Please send us an email at listening to paint dry at gmail.com. If you got comments, questions, thoughts, concerns, tell us what you're working on. Like, subscribe, or follow wherever you get your podcasts from. And if you could leave us a positive review, we'd greatly appreciate it. And remember, becoming a better, braver, happier painter may feel like it's taking eons of time to do, but all the practice and the end results mean the battle is worth it. Until next time. Listening to Paint Dry with Mike and Dan is a production of LTPTWMD. All rights reserved. No portion of this recording may be used without the express written consent of the host. The music is Death by a Thousand Questions by Springtide. Download from the free music archive on a non-commercial attribution share alike basis. All views and opinions expressed in the show are solely the views and opinions of the person who said them. All celebrity voices, if any, were impersonated and done so poorly.